Hi friends, welcome back. This is week three, day five. For today's lesson, all you need is your thinking cap and your listening ears, and that's it. So we can get started with our lesson. We're going to start with a riddle. Do you remember doing riddles before? I will read the riddle and you will be thinking about what the animal might be. Once you know, whisper it into your hand and we'll release it at the same time. Mystery riddle number one. I look like a dog, but I'm not a dog. I hunt with a pack. I howl. I am a... One, two, three... A wolf, go ahead. A wolf looks like a dog, but they're not a dog. They hunt with a pack and they howl. Good job. Let's do one more. Mystery riddle number two. I live in the sea. I am bigger than a fish, but smaller than a whale. I have teeth. I am usually gray colored. I live in a group called a pod. I am a, I'll give you some think time on this one. One, two, three, a dolphin. Did you get that one? A dolphin, good job with your mystery riddles. Hopefully how's your brain going? Today's learning target says, I can reflect on my learning throughout the module. This is a reflection activity today. Now we've done some reflection before. So let's remind ourselves, what does it mean to reflect? Well, to reflect means to think about something we have done or learned to think about something we've done or learned. Throughout this module, we have done a few weeks of learning in unit one, and today is our last week of unit one. So that's why we are taking some time to stop and reflect. As we're reflecting on unit one, we're going to be asking some questions, like what makes a bird a bird? Share with me, what makes a bird a bird? I'd like to add on by saying that there are so many physical characteristics that make a bird a bird. Number two, what is something you learned about how to create an observational drawing? What is something that you learned about how to create an observational drawing? What did you learn to do? We had to take our time and really look at that picture making close observations. And when we were drawing, we sometimes had to refer back to the picture. What did you add into your picture to tell your reader what different things were? Labels, good. Number three, what did you have to think about when you created your final draft? Remember, that's what we did in our last lesson together. We took one of our observational drawings and we turned it into a final draft. What did you have to think about when you were creating that final draft. Good, maybe you were thinking about what other details you could add to that image, or you were thinking about how you could make it better. Good, and number four, why is it important to show empathy? This is something we touched on just a little bit this week, but we really talked about it in week two. 
Why is it important to show empathy? Yeah, empathy helps us to understand others. When we can decide how someone is feeling and put ourselves in their shoes, it really helps us to understand that person better and it helps us help them. Empathy is important, isn't it? By thinking about these questions, you are able to reflect on unit one. Today's target said, I can reflect on my learning throughout the module. You've done a lot of learning. We looked at that unit one guiding question, what makes a bird a bird? And we listed so many physical characteristics of birds. We did a language dive. We made some anchor charts. We learned about text features that helped us to better understand birds. We did some final drafts or some observational drawings that we then turned in to one final draft. And we discussed empathy and how it can help others. You've learned a lot during this unit. Congratulations on finishing unit one of module three. Give yourself a round of applause. Good job. <laughs> you have completed unit one. Now your independent work today is going to help you get started on unit number two. We will start unit number two next week. But to help you get started, we are going to read a text. Watch the read aloud of Feathers, Not Just for Flying. This is a text that we'll look at next week. I'm going to turn my camera off so that you can really focus on this text. Feathers, Not Just for Flying by Melissa Stewart. Illustrated by Sarah S. Brannon. Birds and feathers go together, like trees and leaves, like stars and the sky. All birds have feathers, but no other animals do. Most birds have thousands of feathers, but those feathers aren't all the same. That's because feathers have so many different jobs to do. Peacock, swan, red-tailed hawk, blue jay, American bittern, anhinga, cardinal, wood duck, rosy-faced lovebird, dark-eyed junco. Feathers can warm like a blanket on cold, damp days, a blue jay stays warm by fluffing up its feathers and trapping a layer of warm air next to its skin. Blue Jay, Bradbury Mountain, Maine. Or cushion like a pillow. Wood duck, Lake Bemidji, Minnesota. A female wood duck lines her nest with feathers she plucks from her own body. These feathers cushion the duck's eggs and keep them warm. Feathers can shade out sun like an umbrella. As a hungry tricolored heron wades through the water in search of food, it raises its wings high over its head. The feathers block out reflections from the sky and shade the water. This makes it easier to spot tasty fish and frogs. Tricolored Heron, Florida Everglades. or protect skin like sunscreen. Red-tailed hawk, Shiprock, New Mexico. On sunny summer afternoons, red-tailed hawks spend hours soaring through the sky in search of prey. 
Their thick feathers protect their delicate skin from the sun's harmful rays. Feathers can soak up water like a sponge. On sizzling summer days, a male sand grouse cools off by soaking his belly feathers in a watering hole. Then the proud papa flies to his nest. While dad guards his chicks, the little ones suck on his feathers to quench their thirst. Palace's Sand Grouse, Gobi Desert, Mongolia. Or clean up messes like a scrub brush. An American bittern always cleans up after it eats. Its feathers have brittle tips that crumble into a dusty powder. The powder is perfect for scouring away the dirt and slimy fish oil that sticks to its feathers. American bittern, Tualatin River, Oregon. Feathers can distract attackers like a bullfighter's cape. A dark-eyed junco distracts its enemies by flashing the bright white feathers on the outside of its tail. Then it quickly covers the feathers and darts off in the other direction. Dark-eyed junco, Lincoln, Massachusetts. Or hide a bird from predators like camouflage clothing. A female cardinal's dull, grayish tan body and feathers blend in with her forest home. They help her hide and protect her nest from enemies while she sits on her eggs. Northern Cardinal, Columbus, Ohio. Feathers can make high-pitched sounds like a whistle. When a male club-winged mannequin wants to get a female's attention, he leans forward, raises his wings over his back, and rapidly shakes them. As feathers with ridges rub against feathers with stiff, curved tips, a squeaky chirping sound trills through the air. Club-winged mannequin, Milpe Bird Sanctuary, Ecuador, South America. Or attract attention like fancy jewelry. Peacock, Busa Hill Forest, New Delhi, India. A peacock's bright, beautiful tail feathers make him easy to spot. At mating time, a female is attracted to the male with the biggest, most colorful fan of feathers. Feathers can dig holes like a backhoe. After bank swallows mate, they make a home together. First, the male uses his bill and the tough feathers on his lower legs to dig a two-foot-long tunnel in a stream bank. He pushes the dirt out with his wings. Then the female builds a nest of straw, grasses, and leaves at the end of the tunnel. Bank Swallow, Bear River, Utah. Or carry building supplies like a forklift. Rosy-faced lovebird, Huab River, Namibia, Africa. Most birds carry nesting materials in their beaks, but not the female rosy-faced lovebird. When she finds grass, leaves, or strips of bark, she tucks them under her rump feathers and flies back to her nest. Feathers can help birds float like a life jacket. Mute swans glide smoothly across the water's surface. Pockets of air trapped between their feathers help these graceful birds stay afloat. Mute swan, Chesapeake Bay, Maryland. Or plunge downward like a fishing sinker. 
Most birds make a special oil to waterproof their feathers, but not the anhinga. The weight of its wet feathers helps the hungry hunter dive deep down in search of fish, crayfish, and shrimp. Anhinga, Lake Martin, Louisiana. Feathers can glide like a sled. Emperor penguins have tightly packed belly feathers that form firm, slick surfaces. The feathers make it easy for these birds to slide across ice and snow. Emperor penguin, a daily land, Antarctica. Or sprint across the snow like snowshoes. Each autumn, Willow ptarmigans grow a thick layer of feathers on top of their toes. Like snowshoes, the feathers increase the size of the bird's feet so they can shuffle across the snow instead of sinking in. Willow ptarmigan, Denali National Park, Alaska. But most of all, feathers can give birds the lift they need to race across the sky. Kinds of feathers. Many scientists study birds, and they are learning new information every day. Right now, not all scientists agree about the best way to classify types of feathers. Here is one system that many scientists use. Tiny filiplume feathers are attached to nerves. They help a bird sense its surroundings, and they let the bird know that its feathers are in place. Stiff bristle feathers around a bird's eyes act like eyelashes. Some birds use bristle feathers around their mouths to locate food. Soft, fluffy down feathers keep a bird warm by trapping body heat next to its skin. Semiplume feathers work with down feathers to keep birds warm and dry. Contour feathers cover most of a bird's body. They give a bird its shape and colors. The flight feathers on a bird's wings lift it up and move it forward. Flight feathers on the tail help a bird steer and keep its balance. Good job listening to our new text. I'll see you next time, friends. Bye!